the Shonen Jump app has launched, and I will do a review of what I think about it after I've spent a little bit of time with it. However, I think, given some new sales numbers that I found, it's important to go over just why I think that that app is going to destroy particularly the big two because, you know, we have stuff coming out like this Eric Esquivel stuff, all these toxic comic pros running around, you know, pretty much saying they want to put people in dumpsters and they don't really care about you. They care about their little club more than anything. (laughs) They don't seem to understand how sales work and that businesses don't run on unicorns and rainbows. So I enjoy seeing them kind of lose a little bit of their flavor because some of them are such arrogant jerks that I think that the industry almost needs to collapse to do a cleansing. And when it does cleanse, maybe it'll rebuild and come back into a little bit more of a relevant state. But you absolutely have to get the Bond villains out. You've got to get the the Ramones out. you got to get the Eric Escavels out. you got to get the Patrick Zurchers out. you got to get them out. Bring in some people that care, like Sean Gordon Murphy, other people. And we're going to see, I'm going to bring up Sean Gordon Murphy in a minute. But there's a there's another site that I found that tracks particularly just book sales. They don't look at floppies, none of that stuff. And they had some interesting stuff that I wanted to show. So the first one I have here. So this is a chart of 20 adult graphic novels. Now this includes everything. Kids books, comic books like graphic superheroes, and the important thing, manga. Now, when you look at this, you are going to see, you're going to see some image comics, like here's Saga, right? And I don't know who Harper is, so I don't know if To Kill a Mockingbird, I'm going to guess that's an American book. That's what I'm separating here. I'm separating by Japanese and American, because those are the two kind of biggest ones. You see, Viz Media is just dominating this entire chart, right? Now, I've highlighted three books here. Three books that I consider to be the mainstream. Like I don't consider Chilling Adventures of Sabrina a uh, mainstream like comic, right? Or saga. Like, maybe it is because it's so high up, but I'm looking particularly at well-known superhero books. I don't know why I, I shouldn't have I shouldn't have highlighted The Walking Dead then, but it's there. What do you notice though on this chart that I've highlighted? There's only two books that are superheroes and they're both batman the rest of the top 20 is mostly manga you're right at the top of the adventure zone here there be gerblins i don't know that's i'm guessing that's a kid's book but what's right underneath that my hero academia volume one pretty much has become like the walking dead of manga trade paperbacks I unfortunately can't look at the actual sales numbers. You actually have to pay a membership for that. I think maybe I will. uh, In this instance, this is one of the things that my Patreon is for. So I'm going to sign up for this uh, website that tracks numbers. Maybe we can have a little bit more of a reliable thing because this is what they say we need to look at. So then you look at My Hero Academia. My Hero Academia is just dominating this list. But what's the one top 10 book you see? Batman White Knight by Sean Gordon Murphy. Someone actually cares. That's actually the top. It's in the top 10. And then right at the bottom, you've got Tom King's Batman Volume 7 Rebirth. Other than that, it's all One Piece and and, uh, and manga in general. You get a couple image comics that slide in there, here and there, and that's it. That's it. Uh... One thing that I liked was the uh, the time that I got reincarnated as Yamcha. Dragon Ball, new stuff from Dragon Ball always makes this list. For sure, because it's it's Dragon Ball. But one thing that I found particularly interesting about this is, you know, they say pirating is damaging everything. But I, I think that these sales charts prove otherwise. I wish I could see the actual numbers, and next time I will, because I'm going to sign up for this website. But the uh, the pirating is hurting things. But it shows that people will still support the actual medium. These aren't digital sales. However, the digital sales for Shona Jump are about to take over digital altogether. There's no way 
that Marvel and DC can compete with that app unless they make drastic changes. Drastic changes. But I think people still want the actual physical trade paperbacks, and you see that reflected here in these charts. Now, I've got one more chart. Now, this is actually just looking at superhero graphic novels. Right? That's it. That's all this chart looks at. And I missed one right here, Black Panther, so I'll go ahead and highlight that. Um, all this looks at is American superheroes. And there's one thing that I want you to notice here. All of it is pretty much DC Comics. DC Comics actually cares a little bit more than Marvel. Marvel's kind of trash right now. I think that that's something we can all agree on, <laughs> that Marvel sucks. And the people that work there suck. You got people like Tom Brevoort and Alana Smith. That, uh, I don't know, I think they drink all day or something. I'm not sure what they do. But uh, if you look at this, what's at the top? Batman White Knight, Batman Volume 7. And then you go to number four, you finally get a Marvel comic. Right. What is it? It's old. Infinity Gauntlet. That's what's up there. Then you go to Watchmen. I mean, that's always going to be up there. People actually use that in college courses. Overwatch, which shouldn't be surprised. It's a huge game. V for Vendetta. Dark Knight's Metal, Black Panther book number one. So you finally get there. Now, I don't really count the Star Wars stuff. I guess you could if you really wanted me to. There's a reason I didn't highlight it. It's because Star Wars stuff is always going to sell. It's always going to sell because it's Star Wars, especially when you do stuff on Darth Vader. I don't really count that as, an, uh, as a property from Marvel, per se, like an X-Men. But if you want to argue that semantics, you can. They did get that one in there. X-Men Grand Design, Second Genesis, that's old stuff. That's a retelling of the old stuff. They're pretty much like clipping and putting stuff in there to tell the narrative of the X-Men. So I count that as old stuff. Then you got Runaways by Rainbow Rowell. That's newer stuff. So you can say that's newer. And then you got Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe, also newer. And then at, rounding it out at number 20, Infinity War. So you got mostly old stuff on there. Whereas with DC, you have White Knight, that's very new. Batman Volume 7, that's new. Uh, you got Dark Knight's Metal, that's new. Killing Joke will always be on there. But then you come to Justice League Volume 1 by Scott Snyder, that's very new. Very new. And then uh, The Dark Knight's Rising, Peter Tomasi, keeping that up on there. So... I think it's a good point here that no one seems very interested other than Black Panther Volume 1. This is a newer one. Uh, I, I hear that that's a decent run. I, I don't have any interest in the character. And I refuse to support Ta-Nehisi Coates for the nasty things that he said about America and 9-11. So I, I will never support that man. Anything that he... I put a, I put a hard line on Ta-Nehisi Coates. I won't support him. Uh, he's like one of two artists that I will never, I will never touch. But the significant thing here is that Marvel barely cracks this list with very few titles, except mostly old stuff, minus one book. And it's always their old stuff. DC is doing pretty good. But it still doesn't take away from the fact that if you combine everything... Manga is ruining them. And I think that that's uh, something that really needs to be shown because manga is on a roll. And if it continues like this, they will retake everything. You'll uh, stop seeing Spider-Man uh, impersonators when you go to New York City trying to hug you for that dollar. You're going to see Gokus everywhere because it won't take much for them to replace and become more ingrained in the culture. Because they actually tell good stories. They actually tell good stories. So anyway, I really wanted to do this video to bring this up again. I think it's important because we're about to see a total takeover of uh, the industry by manga. And uh, the people at Marvel, it's, it's totally on them. DC is actually trying at least. They don't have as many idiots as Marvel has. But... It's a symbiotic relationship between Marvel and DC. They need each other. If Marvel's doing bad, it's going to hurt the overall market. So, 
it is what it is, I guess. Anyway, let me know what you thought about this video. What do you think about the manga taking over? I kind of asked the same things. Got some really good comments when I did that Shonen Jump video. Uh, let me know what you think about all of this. Uh, do you think there's any saving American comics? Or do you think that Shonen and manga is just going to just run them all over like a, like a semi-truck? Let me know. Hit the notification bell. Hit that subscribe button. Also, check out my Streamy. There's a link in the description. Check out my Patreon. There's a link in the description. Make sure you throw a like up. Let's try and get five or six of them. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.